So that's a very, very important topic that we've been discussing lately in the past few years, treatment-free remission in patients with chronic myeloid leukemia. So as we know, since around early 2000, we had imatinib, which really changed the way we treat CML, and patients started having high rate of cytogenetic responses and long-term survival that is nearly now comparable to the long-term survival, uh, to, the, to the survival of the normal population. And after imatinib, we had a newer generation or second generation tyrosine kinase inhibitor, dasatinib, nilotinib, and bosutinib. So those drugs were, were at first tested in the second line setting after the relapse on, uh, or after failure of ponatinib either to toxicities or resistant to therapy. And they were shown to, to be able to achieve it, to, to get back patients into remission in about 50% of, uh, of the cases. However, when we followed those patients in time, either patients who were uh, on imatinib or those who relapsed and then were switched to second generation TKI, uh, we found that the overall survival was kind of similar. Uh, however, deeper responses were achieved. So then we thought, let's bring those, uh, those uh, molecules to the frontline setting. So we tested dasatinib, nilotinib, bosutinib, both in the frontline front setting and patients were able to achieve deeper and faster molecular responses, and by this, by this I mean major molecular response, MR4, MR4.5, and those occurred earlier to the responses that we had with imatinib. However, as I said earlier, overall survival was similar between patients who were treated in the frontline setting with either imatinib or newer generation TKIs. So now we kind of had our patients secured with this therapy, most of them achieving a relatively normal lifespan. What can we do more for those patients? We said, since we have, we're having earlier and deeper responses, why don't we try to stop therapy in some of the patients? And we had, we had data from many groups all over the world that tested the treatment discontinuation in patients with CML who have been in deep molecular remission. It means MR4, MR4.5, which is a level of disease below 0.01%. Uh, and the rates were about 50% plus or minus depending on the study and depending on the criteria that they used. Some studies used two years, some study used three years with undetectable disease or detectable disease but a very low level. So we sought to investigate whether using uh, a more prolonged strategy, uh, having patients being maintained in deeper molecular response for a longer period of time if this would impact this rate and success of treatment-free remission. And that's what we did at MD Anderson. We looked back at a cohort of about 300 patients who were treated with either first or second generation TKI. Some of them had received even third generation TKI either in the frontline setting because it was, uh, it was tested before or in the second or third line setting. And, uh, and all of those patients stopped therapy at some point and we followed them in time. And we have, uh, we have concluded that patients who, had, who were in deep molecular remission for five years or more had a 80% or higher chances of remaining disease-free on the long run. So this is in contrast to what we have seen in previous trial, and now we can say to our patient that this is more of a marathon. You can stop after two to three years, but the chances of success are lower compared to if you remain on therapy and remain disease-free for five years or more. Even when we included all the variables, we looked at many variables uh, in a multivariate analysis to, to see if there are other confounding factors that could impact the success rate on the long run of this treatment-free remission. And we saw that the duration in MR4 or MR4.5 for five years or more is the strongest independent factor associated with a successful treatment-free remission uh, on the long run was a five-year uh, treatment-free remission rate of above 80 to 85 percent. So this is really what we are recommending now at MD Anderson for our patients. We're not recommending early discontinuation. We're, rather, we are recommending patients to continue for at least five years in a very deep and sustained remission. And at that point, we can offer our patient treatment discontinuation, which we believe has a very high success rate after this long period of time. Plus, 
some patients would ask, okay, doctor, if I'm gonna stop therapy, am I at risk of having disease relapsing again? Of course, the risk is here because the success rate, as we said, is around 80%. So there are still some proportion of patients that would relapse. And in fact, in our, uh, in our study, around 50 patients among the 300 eventually relapsed, and all of them, except of one, regained response. So we consider this as a safe strategy as long as the patient is compliant to follow up because it's really important when we stop therapy to keep following the patient initially very closely during the first year and then maybe every three months thereafter and then we can space it more and more. And one more thing regarding monitoring, uh, interna some, some guidelines, as for example, the NCCN guidelines will recommend every month to monitor patient at least for the first six months after stopping therapy for the first time. In fact, when we compared the strategy at MD Anderson, we compared patients who were followed by PCR every four weeks compared to every, uh, every six to eight weeks. And we did not find any difference in the success rate of treatment-free remission in those patients. And therefore, we believe that a less strict follow-up, maybe every six weeks to every eight weeks early on, is beneficial for the, uh, for the patient similarly to every four weeks and this can spare the patient frequent visits and this can spare patients more financial toxicity. So two main messages from this study, uh, try keeping the patient as much as possible on therapy until they achieve MR4 or MR4.5 for five years or more before considering stopping therapy and this gives them a high chance of treatment-free remission of about 80% and make sure that the patient is compliant to follow up after stopping therapy and we can loosen follow up during the first year to every six to eight weeks rather to every four weeks without uh, impacting outcomes.